Hi everyone, welcome to Monart. We are trying to put together some stay-at-home tutorials for those of you who are not able to come into the studio. These are not very long and we're hoping that it helps you to keep up with your skill sets. So give them a shot and uh, if you have a feedback for us, do let us know if there are certain types of projects that you'd like for us to develop for you so that you could have quick exercises to work with. That's what our intention is. So we hope that you enjoy this effort and it works out well for you. Thanks for watching. For this exercise, I'd like to get like something that's circular. So let's try a Pokemon that is circular. Jigglypuff would do. So we're going to create nice round circle over here. He's got that little curl that falls over his head. I'm saying he, but I don't know. This one. And we can have two eyes. And mouth. You can have one, two, three, four, six, There we are. That's our base. And our shiny side, always define where your source of light is going to be. So this is my sun that's shining down on Jigglypuff, technically. I am going to just use and work with um, blue color. I'm going to use just acrylic paints, regular stuff. You can get this at any kind of Walmart, Kroger's, anything. They're very, very cheap, but they're really good. So blue is my main color. I'm going to go ahead and pour some of it in here. Not a lot, just enough. I would like to get more white for right now and then later on we'll get some black as well. So here's my white. To do, whenever you want to work with a gradient, that means being going from being light and bright to becoming darker on the other side, you want your paints not to dry up too fast so you have to be efficient if this is your white take a tiny dot of the blue and mix that into your white so you create the lightest shade of blue and we're going to start our painting i can also show you this technique where i just go straight in and i start a lot of my work I'm going to keep this nice and simple, so I'm only going to break it into three shades. Right here, this is one. This is another. This is another. And this is another. So I've got my light shade. I need some more white. If I try to work with lesser paint, I am going to get in trouble no matter what I do. Scoop up a lot more blue so that I can get a si sort of a medium tone this time. And I want to make it comparatively darker. So a little bit more, I think, so that it can go in as a nice and always mix well so that it doesn't start to feel like, oh, well, maybe you should have mixed it a bit more. And that feeling always creeps in, always, always, always. Keeping it nice and easy, going around my nice thick lines. Now, before I blend any further, my brush is out of color. At this point, I can go back to this intersection of the light and dark and just go back and forth. 
clean my brush off dry it on a kitchen towel and then with a clean brush help it to blend again so that the gradient the, that means where they come together to become light and dark should be a very smooth and a natural transition and not something that's abrupt and should not feel like sudden lines I've got it here going to go ahead and get my next one going here every time I apply it into an area it is a good idea for me to kind of always make sure that I do my blending as well so I don't want to get too many areas wet right away I'm going to put my colors in to enough I know my paper wasn't brand new but it's a good paper still for trying to do a practice run clean brush Notice that both colors were active, so I was able to blend. If this looks like I've lost my first color, I can grab some of my old light color and reapply it back on so that I can help it to mix in and look like a better gradient. Right there. Going to get the medium. And I've patched up to this much. Clean off my brush. I want see how it's bright and dark. You want to make it smooth. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And there we are. I like that a lot better. It doesn't show any kind of a sudden change in color. Now I want to go into my darkest. So this the blue right out of the bottle. And this is going to come in for the rest of my Jigglypuff's area. I need more. Now I want your eyes to notice one thing. In where we had white and blue mixed, there was a stronger color. Now I'm getting streakiness. So I'm going to grab a tiny touch of my white element and mix this into my dark blue. Not a lot, just a little bit. Because white by chemical properties is a more denser color. And what that basically means is that when you mix white into anything, it will become more opaque. It will not cause streakiness. You can have the color, what we, what they like to sell in the paint shops as being block color. Basically has their chemical composition altered or varied to where they become more dense and they don't leave streaks. Very important. People have paid top dollar in the paint business to create the perfect colors and hues. What we like to go and buy at Home Depots and everything, there's a lot of time companies have spent to create every single perfect color. That is a big industry right there. I'm going to put a little bit of my blue back in again so that I can blend because it's sort of dried up. And this is something I want you to understand as well. Is there is no rule that says you cannot reapply colors to make them look better. So again, I'm going to put the blue and the bring in my dark again, my dark again, and mix, 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 mix to where it looks very smooth and transitional, and not like. Uh, pattern lines or something. So look at the brightness here, look at the dark here. If I wanted to make this a tad bit more darker, I can bring in a black. I know I haven't done the arms and all, but the idea is to show you the main body and I'm going to fix this. I cannot leave it streaky and blotchy like this. I'm going to go ahead and Mix that in to bring a nice smoother gradient. Now I have a little bit of black. If I take this black and I apply it right here where there should not be any light. Now I'm going to grab some of the blue again and put a fresh coat of blue and now I'll run my brush over both together. 
up and down, up and down. Not trying to cover too much more of any of the other areas. Just a tiny touch of water. like so. So now I've got a deep dark color. I could do this or I could leave this out. These are choices that you make. Similarly I can go ahead and finish the rest of it but the exercise for me to keep it in a certain time zone for you is to show you that you can create gradients by simply putting colors side by side but don't let them dry. Take some time to hurry up and mix and shade and blend and get everything all nice and smooth like it's just flowing into each other. Hope you enjoyed this one.